Hi and welcome to the very very first live stream on my YouTube channel. I'm super scared but I decided to try out something new and to do this live stream probably the first one is gonna be uh, quite quick and short. My name is Leonard Navi, I'm a software engineer and open source enthusiast. Um, the goal of this initiative called the open source video blog is to share news about open source software and hardware. Um, I started it a few years ago, but due to the lack of time, I wasn't able to keep up the pace. So after just two episodes, I've stopped it and now I'm trying to revive it. I'm doing this just for fun, as well as to try out OBS. The whole thing is streamed using OBS. I'm also trying out my uh, brand new project. This is a keyboard with hotkeys for o OBS. Um, and it's reprogrammable, but I've programmed it for OBS. So ideally, I'm going to make one live stream with news about open source software and hardware per month, or eventually one live stream every two months. However, I don't want to make any commitments because I'm doing just for fun. If I don't have time, I won't be able to do it. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, there are commands, uh, so you can write commands if anyone is watching live my youtube channel isn't very popular so i'll be surprised if anyone is watching live but please leave a command let me know if you like it if you don't like it how to make it better i'm a software engineer uh, really out of my comfort zone while doing a live stream so i'm sure that there are a lot of things that can be improved okay so i have a short listed uh, some interesting open source news that came on my radar. Of course, this is a very small portion of all news uh, that we uh, have from the open source world. Um, I just uh, found out that these are some of the news that I would like to, to have here. So uh, let's quickly go through them. Linux kernel version 5.7 was released in June. It brings many improvements and new features such as the Apple USB fast charger driver, stable Intel Tiger Lake generation 12 uh, graphics driver, AMD Renoir graphics, mainline Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, for uh, 865 and a lot of more. Recently, I watched a video saying that uh, Linux for gaming has significantly improved. So who knows, maybe in the near future, we may see the year of the Linux desktop after all. Who knows? Maybe. WireGuard. It's a fast and modern secure VPN tunnel with driver written in C and user space implementation written in Go. It's available under GPO version 2 license. This is one of the most um, exciting features brought to, uh, to the Linux ecosystem. It's available uh, as part of the mainline Linux kernel version 5.6. And now the news from June is, th is that uh, WireGuard is being ported as a kernel driver also for OpenBSD and it is expected with release of OpenBSD version 6.8. Android 11 beta is here. Google released it as a developer preview on 10th of uh, June this year. The focus is on three key aspects, people, controls, and privacy. So uh, in terms of people, uh, they have improvements for notifications, converse, uh, conversation bubbles, which allow the users to do better multitasking, uh, better voice access for the people interested in full control of their device through voice commands. Uh, this is an accessibility feature. Also, better controls of smart devices. As you know, uh, nowadays Google has a lot of smart devices. I'm, uh, I'm an owner of several uh, Chromecasts and Google smart speakers. So Android 11 will bring these features. And in terms of privacy, there are some significant uh, changes. First of all, users can now give one-time permissions for the applications. Also, uh, there is this uh, so-called feature for permissions auto reset. The idea is that if the user uh, has given um, a lot of permissions to a certain application, but for a long time hasn't used this uh, application, Android will 
automatically reset the permissions if the application is not actively being used and the next time when the user tries to use it uh, he'll be asked to give permissions to this application uh, another important thing is the google play system updates of android uh, the idea here is that this will further reduce the fragmentation of android and uh, hopefully will allow to update the whole system through google play store so the Android 11 beta is available as a pre preview. You can give it a try. Linux Mint 20 was uh, released. Uh, it's a long-term supported release uh, for the next five years until uh, 2025. It provides better NVIDIA Optimus support, removes the 32-bit support. So Linux Mint is just for 64-bit machines. Uh, it comes with an application called um, war pinnator for easy file sharing across local network and as usual linux mint is based on ubuntu uh, linux mint 20 is based on ubuntu 2004 which was also released a couple of months ago Qt. so Qt is a framework for um, uh, application development that supports multiple platforms Qt 5.15 has been released on 26th of may it's a long-term release uh, the development of Qt uh, 6.0 uh, is um, going further. The first uh, Qt uh, version 6 snapshot was made available in the middle of June, on 15 June 2020. And uh, furthermore, QML Online, this is a web adaptation powered by WebAssembly, uh, which pretty much brings uh, QML to, the, to your web browser. So now QML Online is hosted by KDE and you can visit it at qmlonline.kde.org. Here is a screenshot how it works. Uh, more news related to KDE, KDE Plasma 519 has been released. Plasma is, uh, this is the KDE desktop environment primarily for Linux systems. Uh, the new version 5.19 has been released on 9th of June. It brings better Wayland support. Wayland is a graphical display protocol that is replacing X11. I'm very enthusiastic about it because I have been using it on several embedded devices. Also KDE Plasma um, brings improved system settings. Uh, here you can see a screenshot. Uh, new wallpapers, that's definitely not a major thing, but still you have new papers with uh, new uh, wallpapers with the new release. There are other minor improvements and big fixes and so on. The Free Software Foundation now offers video conferencing service for its associated uh, members. And of course, the Free Software Foundation wants to offer this with uh, free and open source software. So they decided to go with Jitsi Meet. Uh, Jitsi Meet is a simple open source free video conferencing platform that does support desktop sharing, Etherpad, multi-user document editing, integrated chat, and other capabilities. It runs directly in your web browser. Uh, you can run it successfully in, um, in uh, Chrome or Chromium. Jitsi Meet supports self-hosted installation. That's the big difference compared to uh, things like Zoom or Google Hangouts because you can uh, Jitsi, Jitsi Meet is open source, so you can install it on your own machine and have full control and uh, guarantee privacy of your conversations. Um, uh, it's important to say that Jitsi Meet supports installations only on 64-bit operating systems. Um, it's a suite of several components. Um, some of the components are written in different language. The main, The core component is actually written in Java, but there's a chat written in Lua. So the installation includes uh, several dependencies. Uh, it's recommended to set, up, set it up on a powerful x86-64 machine. However, I've managed to install it successfully at home at my Raspberry Pi uh, 4. Uh, of course, Raspberry Pi 4 is not the best choice for Jitsi Meet, but it's uh, still possible to, to install it probably over the time. And the support of Jitsi Meet for ARM devices will be better. If you're interested in installing Jitsi Meet or Raspberry Pi, uh, you can have a look at a video that I've uh, published a couple of weeks ago. So um, let's uh, continue with news, open source news uh, from the web uh, ecosystem. 
Mozilla Firefox web browser uh, version 77 was released on 2nd June 2020. It brings various security fixes, uh, improved Firefox accessibility. Uh, it's also um, possible now to easily view and manage web certificates uh, at uh, about uh, certificates page. That's convenient uh, to uh, see all the certificates in one place. Now, um, a couple of news uh, regarding languages that you execute on the server. First, let's talk about Perl. Perl 5.32 was released with Unicode 13 support, change comparison capability, a new experimental infix operator called ISA, or ISA, not sure how to pronounce it. So this operator is there to test whether a given object of an instance of a given class or class der derived from it, from it other um, uh, there are other improvements with Perl uh, 532 as well as some bug fixes and um, major news is that Perl is now hosted in github so you can visit the repositories at github.com slash Perl slash Perl 5 and also Perl 7 was announced the idea of Perl 7 is to be the next version of Perl after 5 version 5 and to skip version 6 the previously known as Perl 6 initiative is now known as the Raku programming language, so version 6 will be skipped. And we covered Perl. Why not talking a little bit about PHP? PHP 8 is coming soon. PHP 8 Alpha 1 was released um, three days ago on 25 of June 2020. It provides just in time support. The JSON extension is now an integral part of PHP. It cannot be disabled. Of course, there are bug fixes and some performance improvements. This release, as the name suggests, it's an alpha version just to give it a try. Um, but you're not supposed to use this version in production. It's an early test version. So, um, more news for web developers, this time for front-end web developers angular 10 is here just four months after version 9 google released version 10 of angular uh, again three days ago uh, so angular in general is an open source platform for building mobile and desktop web applications uh, it's developed by google and it's available under an mit license um, there was a huge change several years ago when they switched from angular 2 uh, from Angular 1 to 2 and that broke a lot of compatibilities. However, now the big numbers of Angular are kind of backward compa compatible to each other as far as I know. Uh, Angular 10 brings a new data range picker, an optional uh, stricter settings and a new default browser configurations. Uh, you can learn more by visiting the Angular website. Uh, there, there, there is a bl blog post uh, with details about all these new features. Now we're moving on to open source news about hardware. And I would like to start with, um, with a whole uh, laptop. It's a do-it-yourself laptop for hacking, customization, and privacy called MNT Reform. This is a German company. Uh, they've launched a crowdfunding campaign at CrowdSupply, which was very successful. And now they'll proceed to manufacturing. Uh, the, uh, the interesting thing about this laptop is that it's an ARM laptop with um, NXP um, IMX8 uh, system on a chip that includes a Vivanti GPU with now supports uh, mainline Linux drivers and OpenGL 2.1 ES20. The, this laptop has a uh, full HD uh, display, 12.5 uh, 12, uh, 12 inch IPS display, 4 gigabytes of RAM memory. And the most interesting part, in my opinion, is the mechanical keyboard and the small display that it has above the keyboard, as well as the trackball. It's a really interesting machine, uh, a machine that's, um, uh, that you don't see every day. Uh, I'm, I personally own an Olimax do-it-yourself laptop. There is one. It's with uh, Owiner A64. So... Um, it will be interesting to see a comparison between this one, uh, my Olimax uh, laptop and MT Reform. However, MTN Reform is a higher end device. Uh, the hardware capabilities are way better. And of course, it's more expensive. 
So um, visit Crowd Supply uh, or just Google MTN Reform to learn more details. Really exciting platform, especially for open source enthusiasts interested in open source hardware. Uh, here are a little bit more photos. Um, uh, you can see how the uh, how the laptop looks like, uh, certain parts of the laptop. I told you about the small OLED display above the keyboard, the mechanical keyboard. You can see here the batteries. There are a lot of photos in the crowdfunding campaign. So you can have a look at, at it in details. Another crowdfunding uh, campaign that has been successfully crowdfunded and again from Crowd Supply. Uh, this time we're gonna speak in about FPGA development board. It's called, uh, it's uh, coming from Radio Lina from Croatia, ULX3S, a fully open source, compact, robust, and affordable FPGA development board equipped with a balanced selection of additional components and expansions. It is with Lattice ESP5 um, FPGA and an or onboard ESP32. So it also has an ESP32 with Bluetooth and uh, Wi Fi. And uh, the last crowdfunding news is a project that I'm personally involved. This is my hobby project, and it's uh, for a smart open source solar smoke absorber called Anavi Fume Extractor. Um, most probably, you have already seen my videos in my uh, channel how to assemble it, how to use it. I'm planning to uh, continue posting videos, so this is it. Here it is. You can see it. And the idea is to, um, to, to keep it on your desk and to absorb the smoke when you're soldering. I'm soldering quite a lot nowadays, so it's uh, good to have a gadget like this. And um, after using some commercially available products, I decided that I need something like do it yourself. Uh, and after making it for my own use uh, with the help of Crowd Supply, I'm able to offer it as a do it yourself kit to other makers. And uh, I'm super excited that quite a lot of people order it and now we uh, will proceed with the manufacturing. Uh, for the manufacturing, uh, I'm in contact with uh, local companies here in my hometown in Povdi, Bulgaria, uh, which will um, do the manufacturing for me. It's designed, the PCB is designed with KiCad. Uh, let's have a look at the recently certified projects by the Open Source Hardware Association. So uh, there are a four, um, uh, uh, actually three projects that I would like to highlight. Uh, in the meantime, in, in June, there were numerous certified boards by Adafruit, uh, Waterroot for Electronic from Germany and Olimax, my neighbors Olimax from Poti, Bulgaria also. Um, so if you're not familiar with the Open Source Hardware Association, uh, this is an association uh, uh, from the United States and basically it, the idea is that they verify that a project that claims to be open source is really open source by verifying that both the software and the hardware of uh, this project are available as uh, a source and under a license that allows you to modify it, to, uh, to distribute and even make and sell uh, this device so under a different brand, of course. Um, so uh, the project that I would like to highlight, uh, the first one is the ESP Boy. It is the first, uh, it's the first um, project from Russia. So uh, have a look here. Uh, the, the Open Source Hardware Association is providing certification numbers for, for the hardware. It starts with prefix for the country. And after that, uh, this is the se sequence number uh, for the certified hardware. So ESP Boy is the first certified open source hardware device from Russia. I'm sure that uh, a lot of uh, new devices will be certified uh, from Russia in the coming years because there's so many talented engineers in Russia and the open source hardware movement uh, is getting some traction. Uh, also, so uh, the ESP Boy is an open source portable modular gadget for retro gaming game development as well as an IoT platform for education and fun. Really cool. Uh, it's available at, um, at Tindy. So uh, visit Tindy, search for ESP Boy. You can purchase it for um, 59 US dollars. Uh, this is uh, without shipping. Uh, the shipping depends on your region. Uh, so depending where you are, uh, it, it, Tindy will calculate the shipping cost. A really nice project. I really like 
the idea, how it's made, great platform, and it's open source hardware certified as such by the Open Source Hardware Association. Another, uh, another um, open source hardware product recently certified, and this is the first open source hardware product certified by uh, Oshawa coming from Portugal. This is a Waterland node for agricultural use with four 12 bits analog to digital converter channels, one 80 bit ADC channel, uh, I squared C port, and one SDI 12 port. Uh, really interesting device. I don't know a lot of details about it, but um, agriculture is something that everyone is interested. Probably it's gonna uh, do a great job. And uh, furthermore, it's uh, with LoRaWAN, which uh, means that uh, uh, you can make a setup uh, and put this in the field uh, far away from the cities and still control it. I guess this is the idea. And Great Scott Gadgets have a new project, again certified by the Open Source Hardware Association. It's called Luna. It's an FPGA-based USB multi-tool for monitoring, analyzing, hacking, and developing USB devices. Here is a screenshot. Um, so um, the more and more FPGA devices are um, appearing on the market. Uh, we've covered two of them. <laughs> Uh, from the recent months, uh, Luna, as, uh, as well as the Radio Luna project from Crowd Supply. And last not least, uh, something that I'm really excited about uh, is Olimax STM uh, P1 Olinuxino LIMP2. It's a little bit difficult to pronounce name, but this is a board, open source hardware board by Olimax. Um, mm. They have progressed with their uh, where with their designs, the best part about Olimax is that they're not only doing um, open source hardware, but they're doing it with free and open source software. And furthermore, they are um, uh, regularly posting updates with the progress on their block. And making a, a board like this with multiple layers, uh, this is something difficult. And uh, it's great to see that there are uh, sharing some uh, insights, how they do it, getting some feedback from the community, applying changes based on the feedback on the community. Um, STM32 MP1 microprocessors are ARM series from STM uh, Microelectronics. These are the first STM um, microprocessors on which you can run Linux. And they are industrial grade, which mean that they work in a, a wide variety of temperatures. Uh, really exciting product. Uh, obviously, uh, considering the name Lime 2, uh, Olimax is having in mind to replace their existing uh, Lime 2 boards with 820, which are their best seller with this device. As soon as it's available on the market, I'm going to buy one. Uh, good job, Olimax. I have to say I'm, I'm friends with uh, engineers at Olimax. Uh, they're really nice guys, uh, open source guys, and also from my hometown, Poti, Bulgaria. Um, and let's wrap up the news for June 2020 with some open source events. Uh, due to the unfortunate pandemic situation worldwide, most of the events are either cancelled or going on as virtual events. So tomorrow the Linux Foundation will kick off the Open Source Summit and Embedded Linux Conference North America. Uh, it was intended to be in Texas, however, due to the circumstances, it's going to be a virtual event. Uh, and um, right after it, Linux Foundation is having a couple of other events. The Yocto Project Dev Day, it's uh, uh, immediately after uh, the Open Source Summit and Embedded Linux Conference. Also, Automotive Grade Linux All Members Meeting is in the middle of July. I'll be attending all these three events. Furthermore, there is a Linux Plumbers Conference uh, in August. Um, it was supposed to be a physical event, I think, in Lisbon. However, they are going to switch to a virtual event as well. So having a virtual event, after all, has some benefits because more people from around the world can join without um, uh, spending too much money for traveling and accommodations. Right, thank you very much. Well, we have someone commanding. Thank you. Uh, it's great to see people watching this live stream. I hope you like it. Sorry if there are any technical issues with with the picture, with the audio or whatever. This is my first live stream, so I'm really excited about it. 
and uh, forgive me if there are any technical issues. Um, I don't have an exact plan when the next uh, live stream will be. It depends on the results on this. Uh, but if it's not too bad, probably next month we will carry on with some uh, news from the open source ecosystem. In the meantime, please leave a comment below with suggestions how to make it better and uh, also links to open source news that you, you would like to see in the next edition. Okay, I think we can wrap it up now with this. Thanks again. S subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date with the latest videos. It was pleasure uh, talking to you. See you next time. Bye-bye.